Hey there, She Heals the World listeners and community. So I don't know if you've ever had this problem, but I know I have. I wake up, I'm really excited to get my day started. There may be a local event happening in my neighborhood or in New York, or there may be something going on online that I really want to show up for. And then I look through my closet and I have nothing to wear. Instant discouragement and don't feel like going to the event anymore. And so today we are talking all the things about fashion and I am bringing Candace Reed on who is an Ohio-based wardrobe stylist and she knows her stuff to share with you some staples that every woman entrepreneur needs in her closet. You don't want to miss this episode. We talk about what and how much you should spend on handbags and jeans and the color of the clothes that you should wear and like the whole nine. So this is a bit of a fun episode. We of course share Candace's journey as a stylist and as an influencer online. So you do get the behind the scenes of her business, but she also gives us some great tips for fashion that we all are going to use. Thanks for listening today and I really hope you enjoy today's episode. Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show with Dr. S, the place to hear stories of heart-driven women creatively living free. Our episodes highlight conversations and insights that support the values of self-care, creative and personal freedom, slower living, happiness, health, and wellness to help you live your absolute best life. To be a part of the movement and join the conversation, step inside our free Facebook group, She Heals the World, and say hello. It brings me great joy to bring you our next episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show today. So today is a really fun episode. I'm really excited to bring Candace Reed on, and she is here to talk to us about her story, as well as give us some fashion tips as we get ready to change seasons. So Candace, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat and just to, to talk about all the things. Yes, all the things. So tell me, your feed is amazing. How did you get started with this work? Okay, so um, I, it really goes back to middle school. I have always loved marketing and branding. I was totally the kid in uh, middle school who like ran for class president and came up with a whole campaign and just really fell in love with like self-marketing and branding. And that kind of followed me through high school. I competed in the Miss America organization for a short while, which is a part of branding yourself. Um, and once I kind of finished with, with Miss America and all of that good stuff, I met some people in the marketing space and just kind of discovered that I had this, this true nap for marketing. And I moved to New York. Um, and I started a blog as a way to kind of keep my, my family and friends up to date on what I was doing. And like, without getting into all of the details, um, life kind of just evolved and, and things happened. And I decided, I decided to pursue, um, a blog, um, and realized that there was this opportunity to, to make money in this space while also sharing things that I love. And that's really how it all came about. And that was about six or seven years ago. Wow. So you've been doing this for a little while. Sidebar, yeah. my audience does not know this about me, but I too am a pageant gal. Oh and my gosh. <laughs> I was one of the finalists for Miss New Jersey, but I totally lost. So I can't say I've won anything, but it was a nice little blip in my background where I was like, oh, I did that for a little while. Maybe no, I'll it's nice. I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, it's pageantry is an interesting world. Like a lot of the opportunities that I have have come directly from that. And so it, it was a really, really good opportunity for me and kind of propelled me into a couple of different avenues that were nowhere on my radar as a career option. Mm, yeah. And I'm sure you also like really got to hone in on your own like fashion, like you said, branding and imagery, because that's really what it's all yeah. about. Presentation. Nice. Very absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. So did you think you were going to like end up doing pageant stuff or fashion stuff or branding stuff when you were like really little and growing up? Or did you have like traditional dreams to be a teacher or a lawyer? Or 
what, traditional what, what? dreams, a hundred percent. So like a little bit of a, a background about me. So I grew up in a single parent home, um, down in South Georgia. And I just was always kind of taught to like, we were always taught to follow our dreams and to kind of pursue different things. But at the same time, there was this kind of interesting duality to, to pick something that was safe and comfortable too, you know, to, to be stable. And so I went through a plethora of, of kind of ideas. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a doctor and actually let me rewind to wanting to be a teacher. Like I thought in high school, I wanted to be a pre-K teacher and I did an intern rotation. And this is what deterred me. The idea of like little kids getting stuff on my white pants that should have told me. (laughs) That should have told me something then that I wanted to be in fashion, but I had no clue. Um, And so. And all the time. So good job. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm so thankful that I had that class because I would have not enjoyed it. But um, so that (laughs) happened. I wanted to be like a broadcast journalist. And I started pursuing that in college and was like, actually, I hate this. Like, I just want to be the talent. I don't want to learn all of these technical behind the scenes things. And I was also double majoring in dance because I grew up doing dance and loved it, but was just never quite sure, like, how could I make a career out of that? And so, um, not enjoying mass media left me with just a dance major. And so at the end of college, I kind of like, I had a, a, a degree in dance, which was not the plan at all. So I think there was always like this, this desire to pursue something creative. I just never quite knew how to make it like a full-time hustle, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And it's interesting that you brought that up because I was going to ask you, like, what was the turning point where you went from this being something nice that you wanted to do to it actually being a job? Like, this is a business that makes money. Um, so that kind of happened. My life story is really, really wild. So um, I think I was sharing that I lived, I, I don't know if I shared this actually, I lived in New York for a short while. So after um, after undergrad, I went to graduate school at NYU and I thought I wanted to pursue a career in nonprofit arts management, which, you know, sounds really great and amazing um, and empowering and motivating. And I got there and I realized that I was never going to make any money in nonprofit. Um, not that money is everything, but but, you know, I'm going to this really, really elite school. I have student loans and debt and all of these things. And um, during my time at the ballet, I realized that the ballet was being funded by the fashion industry, which was really, really interesting. Like Sarah Jessica Parker was a huge donor. Uh, Valentino was a donor there. Um, Chanel, like all of these really, really high end brands. And like this light bulb came on was like, actually, maybe there's an opportunity to pursue um, a career in fashion. And so during all of that time, I was engaged, getting ready to get married. And right at the end of my first full year of graduate school, we were talking about where did it make the most sense for us to live. And so um, New York, like New York wasn't it for us. Like Jason and I had dated long distance the whole time and just uprooting him and his lifestyle to come and be with me for me to be happy just didn't seem like a win for both of us. So I left New York. Um, and in that year I had a lot of time to kind of think about what I wanted to do with my career. And that was right on the, the, I don't, I guess it would be the cusp of fashion blogging becoming, becoming a thing. And I realized that there was this opportunity to monetize. And so I hustled and blogged for like two years before I ever made a dime. But I knew that if I kept honing in on my skill and kind of watching what was happening in the space, there could be an opportunity for me. And so it was two years into blogging before I ever really monetized anything. Mm -hmm. And did you feel like your monetization came mostly from like uh, affiliates or sponsors? From sponsored. Yeah. So I'm actually not an affiliate girl at all. Like I make a little bit of money there, but it's not, it's not my strong suit. Like I always, I often tell brands, if like you're looking for affiliates, like if that's the the end result on the project, I'm not your girl because Mm -hmm. it won't, it won't convert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. really cool. I think that that, that most folks in the fashion and lifestyle industry are going the sponsorship route. And so I think that'll be really helpful for our audience if they're thinking of going into this kind of business, like focus on what movement is. So what, um, I mean, you talked about some of the hurdles, like just kind of getting going, but I guess what was your greatest win since you, since you've started and since you've launched? Um, greatest win, I think, um, oh man, there's so many. Well, let me just say this. I feel like I'm going through a season of greatest wins right now. Like, 
so many amazing things are happening and it feels like you put in so much hard work and you're finally beginning to see the proof in the pudding. And like, I got featured in InStyle this past month, with Woo! this past month, which is a huge win. Yeah, that's huge. That's like amazing. And so th- that's been really cool. A lot of really cool uh, partnerships. I got to do an Instagram story takeover with J. Crew, which is a really uh, well-known brand. I'm doing a partnership with Express right now. So just like super awesome things are happening. Um, but I would say maybe rewind three years ago, greatest win was I was working with a brand actually it was the first ever brand to offer me money. And they offered me a hundred dollars for a blog post. And like, mm-hmm. of course I said, yes, like, you know, like <laughs> first paid partnership, a yes. hundred dollars. I'm that's in a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And so I began working with that brand and I did three projects with them at a hundred dollars. And so this fourth project rolled in and they offered me a thousand dollars after I had done a series of three projects at a hundred dollars. And that just felt like the biggest win because I gave them my best work, even though I was only being paid a hundred dollars. Well, I really want to jump into these wardrobe pieces because I need to upgrade my closet. And I'm quite sure that every woman entrepreneur out there is also like trying to get some tips on how do I like, look, yes. what do I need? And how do I like step out there and feel good in what I'm wearing? So what do you have to share with us today, Candace? Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background um, about what else I do. So in addition to being a style influencer, I'm also a wardrobe stylist for a company called Wardrobe Therapy. So I play in people's closets every single day of the week and it's glorious. Um, and a lot of our, of our gals are, she's a working gal. Maybe she's pursuing something creative remotely. Um, she kind of has many different backgrounds, but these couple of items I'm going to share with you just kind of transcend any type of lifestyle or career. So with that being said, we're going to start with the most essential item you need, which is a great pair of skinny jeans. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's iconic. It's classic. They're timeless. Now, here's kind of the interesting part, though, and a lot of of women struggle with this. You should spend more on jeans um, than like a blouse, if that makes sense. So like, go ahead and spend the $125 or the $150 on the great pair of jeans. They'll stand the test of time. You know, you'll have them for three to five years instead of paying, you know, 50 bucks for the jeans that stretch out and bag out and do you no good in the end. So with the jeans, is it dark blue, light blue, or white? Like what, or black? Like what is the best staple color nowadays? Because I feel like it changes every year. Like white jeans used to be in for a little while. Like yeah. Yeah. White jeans <laughs> on and like now, I don't know. So what is it? You know, that's sometimes the difficult part with fashion. Like everything is changing every five minutes. But yeah. I would recommend you to, uh, to have like two, the dark denim, And then black, because a lot of office spaces are changing or just environments in general where you can get away with wearing a black jean as like a black work pant. So really to have both dark blue and black. Got it. And with that being said, high rise. And a lot of women are still anti high rise. But the whole goal of that is because it pulls you in and makes you nice and lean and long through your midsection. Mm hmm. I love the high rise jeans. I just have to make sure I get the right size because otherwise I'm like sucking things in and trying to squeeze. It. Yes. But if I get the right size, the look, it looks so nice and sleek. Totally agree. No, good. And then one last de- denim tip is that when you're trying these jeans on, you're kind of going through the motions. A, a lot of women can be afraid that they're like, they're like, they're too tight. Your jeans, your skinny jeans in particular, when you're trying them on in the fitting room, they should be more snug because jeans naturally stretch out. So, you know, if they're already baggy in the back or, you know, somewhere else, that's probably typically not a good fit. You know, you want to go ahead and size down. Like they should be nice and kind of smooth. And I don't want to say tight, but like they should fit the waist. Mm. And you know what? It's so good that you said earlier that you're not an affiliate because I know then you can give us like an unbiased. Yeah. (laughs) Is there a favorite brand that you have? Mm, I do. A hundred percent. I wouldn't be a fashion girl if I didn't have a favorite. (laughs) Um, So my favorite is Madewell. And all of my colleagues that I work with, Christy and Elizabeth, they feel the same way. Like Madewell's their jam too. Um, What I love about Madewell, they have regular, short, and tall. So you got all three lengths you need. Um, They come in different rises. So they have anything from a nine inch to an 11 inch. Um, And then they also offer a curvy now. 
So like literally you can fit in any lane. And what's cool about Madewell is I find myself shopping for it from a client who is 21 to a client who is 55. Mm -hmm. And that's a really large, you know, age span. So it really is a more timeless, um, iconic kind of denim brand. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because I feel like Madewell came out of nowhere, you know, like Express has been around for a long time and there's been like all these brands that are like tried and true and Madewell, they just like came on the scene. Do you want me to give you the story? Tell me. I can give you the story. Okay. I did my like (laughs) master's capstone project on Madewell. That's how much I love the brand. So I believe it was in... 1921 like this idea of Madewell was like it was owned forever ago like Mm by uh, by a family Mm -hmm. and essentially J. Crew bought the concept and the heritage of the brand and then created it and then like you know like revived it essentially okay wait a minute J. Crew is behind Madewell yeah absolutely no way I yes no idea okay that's so interesting okay keep going yeah so like so Madewell was like a work where it, it wasn't called Madewell I think it was I can't even think of the name that project is so like in my distant memory but it was in 1921 and it was a workwear denim brand because denim was like the most durable fabric for like working men to wear yeah. and so J, um J Crew essentially brought bought the story and the the identity of of the brand and then created Madewell Oh so it made God. well, um, which is kind of funny because, you know, you try on J. Crew jeans and they are nothing like exactly. made well jeans. I, I mean, no offense to J. Crew, but no offense. Just I love both fit for my body. Like I can never find a jean or a top that like is snug and feels good for me. So I, when I found Madewell, because I love them too, like they just seem so different, but that's so smart for J. Crew to own like both companies. So. Yeah, it's genius. And then last plug about Madewell, if you take in an old pair of jeans, they'll give you um, $20 off. Oh, so you so, get the same too. Yes, yeah, so you get to recycle. So the price point for a Madewell denim is about 128 to 135. Um, mm-hmm. But if you take in that, that old pair of jeans, you get a $20 denim donation. And if you are a student or a teacher, I think you get an additional discount on top of that. Wow. Oh my so, goodness. There this you go. Like a huge Madewell plug. Madewell does not sponsor this show, but they No, they do not. I'm yeah, just a hopefully. loyal cult <laughs> following type of per- person. So lovely. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we talked about denim. Up next is the classic woven so that's like a classic crisp white button down and people are like do I still need this in my wardrobe yes you still need it but what you can do is like depending on your lifestyle your vibe your career you can go with like more of an oversized kind of like relaxed vibe button down which still does the trick or if you're a girl who's a bit more sophisticated you can do like a nice white silk so there's kind of different ways you can play that particular trend you can go more oversized and more boyfriend or you can still be like super polished and do a traditional white button down or you can do something like nice and silky and drapey against the body I think it's just it comes down to preference I have all three because I'm that person yes um (laughs) yeah but I think it's important it's just a great layering piece to have now will you touch it all the time maybe not but you have it there when you need it and that's really the thought process behind the classic white shirt That's really good to know because I don't have a classic white shirt and I swear when I left like the traditional world that I would never wear one again. But now that you're saying this, I'm like, maybe I should get a relaxed one. And like you said, the boyfriend look is in and it's, you know, going into the fall season. So it would be, it definitely is something that I need to get. Yeah, it would add value to you. And the one, um, the one person I always like to bring up, or actually there's too. So Jennifer Aniston, like back in the day, she used to wear a white button down all the time, like with mm-hmm. like with dark denim. And it just yeah. was like her look with her yeah. like nice uh, swooshy bangs. Mm-hmm. And then the person who I feel like just revived this again was Meghan Markle when she stepped out with Prince Harry for their first mm-hmm. appearance after she being the Victus Games. Yes, I remember. And everyone's like, oh, my God, I need an oversized white woven like right now. <laughs> so. So if you say you don't need one, think of those two gals and then you'll decide that you need one. Already done. Already okay. done. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so um, next, let's talk about jackets. So black blazer, done. Like you just need to do it. Um, yeah. I think that's super important. Now, what I like to encourage gals to do, though, is like, okay, 
maybe I don't need like a super structured black blazer. You can do a black blazer that's a knit, so more of like a sweater material. So you wear it more frequently. Or you can do more of a more of a boyfriend type of oversized Parisian chic idea. So again, there's options um, that you can kind of play within. Um, and then secondarily to that, I also think that every girl should have a trench coat. What is your favorite brand for that? Um, uh, man, there's so many options. So Ralph Lauren is a great yeah. option for that. Um, Cole Haan, surprisingly, makes mm-hmm. a good, like affordable one. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to go all out, I'm all about Burberry. I mean, if you're just going to do the thing, like just yeah. go for it. They're like 800 bucks. And I think it's time that I get one. I mean, <laughs> think about it too. Cost per wear. Like it's the yeah. same thing about denim. Like really, if you're, if you're living in it and you're loving it and it makes you feel like the best version of yourself, it's totally worth it to save your coins and buy the thing that you love. Like it yeah. totally just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, for my gal, who's a little bit more cheap and cheerful, Halogen makes a really, really great one. That's a Nordstrom brand. Um, they make a good option. Um, so I feel like you can, if you're looking you can pretty much find anything. Um, and then let's say you don't love the idea of like a super structured jacket. You could do more, one of those more like structureless dusters. Mm, okay. It still doubles as a coat. It's not going to be quite as thick as a trench coat, but it's still going to give you that nice long and lean layer that you're looking for. And that's really the power of the trench coat is like, it just makes you feel long and lean and you feel uber sophisticated. So you could do more of a drapey duster, you know, as a, as a secondary option. Okay. Love it. Love it. Keep on. Okay. (laughs) Okay, cool. So then from there, we're going to move to handbags. So like, you're not even a gal if you don't have a great black handbag. Like you have to be, you have to have that, like no excuses. You got to have it. Yeah. Um, and I, I know some people are like, oh, I just love brown. Yeah, that's true. But you need to have a good black one. Like black is just timeless. And I promise if you buy it, you will pull it out. Mm-hmm. And I was that girl who like, I wasn't, I was totally that girl until like three years ago. I didn't own a solid black handbag. So this past year I buy a new bag every quarter. Yeah. Just because I like live in my bags mm-hmm. um, and I force myself to only buy black handbags for the first two quarters mm. to like, so that way my black handbag collection is just as strong as like my tan and my neutrals. It's nice to be able to go in between all of them. I mean, it's so interesting you gave these tips because I'm thinking of like social networking events that people mm-hmm. can and you know, the jeans that you mentioned with the white button, button down with the blazer and the black handbag, like that all goes together as like a really staple signature chic outfit that I think any woman in business will need in her closet. So that's super. Yeah. You wear them all together and you also break them all up. And that's really the power of these, like the whole classic wardrobe is that they're strong together, but they're strong as separates too. So, so helpful. And I am quite sure there are so many women that are going through their closet and looking around saying, okay, I need to get my life together because I don't have everything I need in my closet for this new season. So with the black handbag, before we go into our next question, because I really, really want to hear your take on this, but okay, for the black handbag, how much do you think folks should spend on a good handbag? I mean, you may be asking the wrong person because I'm like a handbag scene. So like, I just believe that like, I think it should definitely be over a hundred dollars for okay. sure. But I think the 300 to $500 price point is really comfortable. Mm, you know. So that's like a Rebecca Minkoff bag. You can yeah. maybe find a Ted Baker, uh, All Saints. It's still really, really yummy contemporary brands. Mm-hmm. I think like the message of this episode is to stop just spending and buying things that you're going to wear a few times and then toss or give away, but to start making solid investments. Oh my gosh, yes. Health, because you will hold on to those things for forever. Like my trench coats, I hold on to for forever. There are some jeans. Mm-hmm. I know it goes up and down sometimes, but I have like jeans for when I gain weight and I have jeans for when I'm at my regular weight and I yeah. hold on to them for forever. It just, it works. It works. And I would say one tip is this is not us empowering you to overspend on every item in your wardrobe. Yeah. That's not what we're saying. Yeah. We're saying to invest in the things that are like 
timeless and moldable and that will add value to your life nearly every day. And then go cheap and cheerful on trend pieces or the pair of snakes, snake print shoes that you're kind of having a moment with. Um, spend less money on those things because you're probably going to get rid of them. But the things that you're wearing on the regular, go ahead and spend the $150, go ahead and spend the $500, maybe spend the $800 on the Manolo Blahniks. Like go ahead and do that because it's going to add value to you long-term and you're going to look and feel your best whenever you wear those items. Yes. You know, I secret here, I cannot wait for animal print to be out. I am like not an animal print gal. What? Like I know it's so anti-fashion, but I am so plain. I just like a plain black pump, or like you She's know, like, simple, stuff. simple. You're very like French then, because like, I mean, exactly. Yeah, I think that's fine. <laughs> So this has been so amazing. I have had such a blast with you. And I mean, looking back, number one, your styling tips are life-changing and game-changing for women because we know that like how you step out is how you're perceived. And oh my gosh, yes. And what you wear, like your business success comes right after that. It is all about how good you feel in, in your body and in what you're wearing. So that these tips were so, so helpful, Candace. Oh, and good. I good. I'm thinking about, you know, your business and your own business journey. And I'm wondering if you could look back and give your 10 year younger self any piece of advice now that you are where you are, which is such an amazing place. What would that advice be? It would have been to not have hard plans to like leave room for magic. Yeah. Um, and so I think I could have like, um, not had nearly as much stress and anxiety about my career and like what I'm supposed to be doing if I had left more room for magic and I'm thankful that I got married and was like in this like lovely like everything's great and like life is amazing and I'm in love that allowed me room to have that magic otherwise I wouldn't have landed where I did because I was so fixed on what I thought was what was best for me. Yeah, you know, that is so true. And I think so many people can relate to that because we like bang out these strategic plans for our life where we think we know what the future has in store for us. But really, sometimes you got to just let God work, you know, Girl, just say that again. <laughs> open yourself up and be available to the opportunities that are presented and you will have so much more fun in the process. So thanks again for joining us, Gorgeous. Tell us how people can find you, support you, like drop your yeah. Okay, so you can find me on the web at CandaceMreed.com. Right there, you'll see all of my social handles, all the things. I'm also Candace and Reed on every other form of social media. And if you're interested in following along what I do on the daily with my styling stuff, Wardrobe Therapy, it's the company I work for. We have lots of cool, groovy tips too. Um, And you can also hire me there if you wanted to. So, boom. 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 I can't wait to have you back, Candace. Thanks for coming on the show. (laughs) Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I had a blast. This was fun. This was fun. Well, there you have it. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. And as always, for more resources as you continue to live out your beautiful mission of healing the world and grow your beautiful business, you can head to www.shehealstheworld.com forward slash freebie to see what new resources I have in store for you. Thanks for listening. Tell a friend. And I can't wait to see you at the next episode. Oh, my God.